from the Key Radio Studios in Provo, Utah, and broadcasting live throughout Utah County, Sevier County, South Central Utah, Carbon County, and the Uinta Basin. It's your good friends, Mike and Heather, in the morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You're being protective there oh. of your questions. <laughs> Allison and Ellie looks at me and she's like, oh, there's a quiz. <laughs> Good morning. You're wrong. This is going to be a great day, my friend, because you know, we've been talking about marriage, love and marriage all week long because, of course, it is Valentine's Day week and tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Hint, hint, everybody. Valentine's mm. Day is tomorrow. You have been warned. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. And it's coming up fast. So at least <laughs> chocolate, okay? Chocolate's good. You'll mm. get nothing and like it. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but it's been so good. We have, if you've been following, we have been talking to couples in various stages of their marriage. So we started off, of course, with newlyweds, and that was really sweet and fun. And we had <laughs> uh, David and, and Addie Denning. Uh, Addie is the music director here at Key Radio, so that was really fun, and, and it was great having them. And then uh, we had uh, Chris and Katie Dotson, and they were about the first decade. They just finished their first decade of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And then yesterday we had Matthew and Chandra Anderson, and they had two decades under their belt, or it'll be this year they have two Mm -hmm. decades. But now, oh, I'm so excited because I have so many questions to ask you. (laughs) We have Rex and Ellie Dana here, and they're going to be sharing us like the next 20 years. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes and is this i get excited about this when i hear that people have been married for and you guys almost 45 years right okay when 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 are you celebrating 45 years this year this, this year this year okay in april, april. you said mm-hmm. good month by the way so <laughs> so this is exciting this is exciting it's a and long it's, time it's to a, be married yeah, yeah it is it is you know we've been together uh, for 47, 47 years. Now she, she set the, our uh, anniversary. We got married. So on the same day we met, so I wouldn't mess that up. <laughs> you know, we have one date to remember. <laughs> that's good. <clears throat> I think that, I never put that pressure on Mike. I'm like, um, I don't know. That's just funny. It's, 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 not, just, it's, not, it's important not important to, important us. to yeah. us. We have been together for <laughs> since 72 Wow, 1972. Mm-hmm. Tumultuous years just a, in general sure. for America. And Were you hippies? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I was in uh, the military. No. Oh, opposite Every, of hippies. <laughs> anytime you, you say a year, I always think car. So I'm always picturing the car of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's how I connect things like yeah. that. I don't know. Okay, well, good. Yeah, because I was driving a 72 Shiv Nova. I just had gotten it. So mm-hmm. it was 72, 72 Nova. Do you still have it? No. No. no I wish did, I did. Yeah, everybody says that. Oh, 350 or do you have the big truck in it? <laughs> 350. Yeah. And yeah, this yeah. is cars with Mike and Rex. <laughs> 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 that's great. Oh, that's but, how you connect with guys. <laughs> that's right. You that's right. Cars. That's right. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I wish Let's I didn't sell that nails. car. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going there. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm listening to this jingling. And I just realized it's my, my, um. My necklace is on my belt, but that's okay. So anyway, I have a quiz for you because I think I, I say there were some good questions that I had for all the other, 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 other couples. And I thought I was going to be kind to them and not ask them the difficult ones because, you know, I don't know, maybe, but you guys have been married so long. I figured I could ask some that are a little bit more fun. Mm. Okay. Are mm. you ready? Uh, yeah. Ready. The, the good news is this is key radio. Everything is G rated. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep it that way, okay? <laughs> I'm going to start with Ellie. Ellie, what is Rex's most irritating habit? Ooh. Oh, you had 40, all over 45 years to figure this one out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still pausing to think yeah. about it. Yeah, let's, let's still There's dissolve it this year. Still the journey of discovery. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Just irritating. Um, hmm. Hmm. And this is why they've been married for wow. 45 Pop years. Yeah. Your, your breakfast is slipping away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too but punctual? He's punctual. Too punctual. Yeah. See, yeah. that is irritating. All these That's years. That's not irritating. Mike thought yeah. it was irritating that we're always late for things. But here, that could that could be my irritation for you. I no, because you're wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'm turning the tables. Irritating habit of Ellie's. Always seems to be running late. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, there's just too safe here. Let's find a harder one. Okay. Um, we want to keep them married, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Leave in separate cars. <laughs> Excuse me, I will walk home. Okay, um, how about this? What, uh, Ellie, what does Rex complain about the most? Mm. Do, 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 <laughs> No, we're not complaining. We, um... Our toughest negotiation is when we're doing, like, landscaping. Then I have it pictured in my brain the way I want things to look Mm -hmm. when we're finished. And he has another idea, and we're like, I want it my way. (laughs) Or the highway and a happy mama, you know. Yeah. But... Not okay, really. I, I just have to stop. You guys are killing me because it's like we've talked about complaining. Um, in in other other days, we talked about um, you know fights or you know, and and some couples are saying disagreements, but we don't really fight anymore because you know that's so immature. That's what Katie Dodson said the other day. You're you're not even there. You're like, oh, our negotiations. <laughs> You're, even the way you talk is so much better. I'm like, I never even thought that those could be negotiations. <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. Well, with it. us, it's basically what it is in negotiations. Is we talk about it because, uh, I mean, to have something like that blow into a, a fight or which I, I can't even say the word fight. To mm-hmm. me, you know, a fight is, you know, knuckles and this kind of stuff. So it, just a disagreement is it. You know, it fits. It's usually she's going to win out. So I, you would think I would just acquiesce <laughs> Except and when get it comes over. To landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even then, uh, if I just, you know, acquiesce and go about my business and get it get it done, we're, we're in better shape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. We're having negotiations from now on. This is awesome. <laughs> well, I, this is, this is going to be a great conversation. Thanks for humoring me with these questions. I might sprinkle a few more in there. But mm. I think you guys were ready for me. I, I think that you had a test or something. Okay, if she asks us these kinds of questions... This is how we're going to answer. Uh, <laughs> Ellie has a script written now. She there. does. Yeah. She does. She's ready. She is ready. <laughs> Let's follow that. It looks yeah. good. Okay. I want to start. I love the stories. I absolutely love the stories of how people meet. So can you guys tell us how you met? If you can remember. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, um, Rex was in the military, mm-hmm. stationed in Green River, Utah. And um, he was coming into Moab just for a night out. <clears throat> and um, and I was walking home to my sister's with my girlfriend because she lived on the same street. And he stopped by and picked me up and <gasps> took me home. A stranger. Okay, don't it do this. It was a different day, folks. Don't In do this. In 1972. <laughs> <laughs> and don't do that, young ladies. <laughs> <You're> crazy. <laughs> wow. It was he, did he say like a cool pickup line or anything? I mean, like, <laughs> how, how did he hey, say, baby. hey? <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> he just um, honked at her, really? That's all you did? Yeah. Um, yeah, he just pulled over and I saw California plates on his car and. Another reason I was not 1972, to get <laughs> and I was I felt okay with going with a friend, you know. And we said, "What if he gives us a ride home?" I says, "I'm hot. I'm tired. I want to go home." Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, crazy girls. What are you thinking? <laughs> and then he gave us a ride home, and then we had a date. <laughs> was, was he in uniform? No, no, N- civilian no. clothes. Yeah, there was there was me and a, a buddy were in the car anyway. Drove by, seen them, honked, they waved. Good enough. <laughs> pull, pull over. This you is know. friendly. And uh, yeah, we um, anyway I took him home and and asked her something about she wanted to go out later on. You know, she said yeah. So we took off. Didn't get her name, but I knew where she lived. <laughs> Show up a little later. About the time I was gonna go out and have something to eat and stuff. And um, knock on the door. She doesn't answer. Oh, I don't even know who. To, it's her <laughs> sister, and I don't even know who to ask. Close for. enough. <laughs> I says, "Is there is there another is there another girl that lives here?" She, oh, you mean Ellie? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so when he came to the met. door to pick me up, he goes, 
hi, I'm Rex. And I go, hi, I'm Ellie. And he goes, nice to meet you. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, my. There's just so many wrong things about this. <laughs> Everything. Everything. It was, the first we, date was bowling? Uh, no. No. Uh, we, that was before we were Christians. I'll just put it that way. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and this Where is we important. Went. Okay. So now this was in 72, you said you met? Okay. Yeah. Now, um, I guess I want to know, like you go on this first date, maybe then you go on a second date. When what? When did you think, I think we're going to get married? I, when did that happen? I'm kind of fast forwarding. Well, let, me, let me clarify really quick. At, at that time, uh, I was married. My first marriage was on the rocks. Things were, were going bad there at that time. And so it was, you know, I was stationed there in Green River off and on mm -hmm. for most of a year. We were shooting missiles down south. And um, so we were, were dating. And as we were dating, we obviously were falling in love. I said, Ooh. You know, this, is, this is it. Okay. And so, uh, three years later, we three, got married. Took him three years. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it would have mm -hmm. been quicker, I'm, I'm guessing, if there wouldn't have been some other issues family issues going on at that time and we won't get into but <laughs> <laughs> see and this is i i think this is an encouraging thing for all of us because you know mike and i too i mean we didn't start off the best of ways either i mean everybody has their stories and a lot of times we think oh these christians you know they're 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 just always so perfect and it's got to be check this box check this box off and then you know you have to ask the parents or da, da, da. you know humans are messy hum we're messy 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 and that is just a reason why we need the lord jesus is because if we, when we do it ourselves what did we just oh. I'm hopping in a car with a woman a man that I never met before without a state plate that's Come on. That's, yeah. I'll either marry him or he'll kill me one of the that's two right. <laughs> so, I mean it's just this is but this is the reason why we need the Lord Jesus and yes. praise the Lord that he's so merciful merciful and loving and and just has so much good for us in mm. his heart but we so this is good I I'm I'm actually really excited that um you you kind of jumped off on a weird start so that we can navigate oh, we through all this there's hope for us all i mean you guys mm. have been married for 45 years god's mm -hmm. done something in your lives mm -hmm. oh Praise god this is wonderful my friend let's you know let's go to some music because we've got a lot of questions to ask these beautiful couple and if you have a question that you would like to ask or encourage them or whatever why don't you give us a text 855-539-4583 that's 855 key glue you're listening to mike and heather in the morning on key radio Key Radio Life Unlocked Truth Unleashed. Hey, thanks for joining us today. It's it's a great day. It's we have Rex day. and Ellie with us, and we're talking about the marriage. We're talking about marriage, and we're in the category of 40-plus years here. This is the, the folks that have been married a long time, have a lot of experience to share with us, and we really appreciate it. A uh, word from, from Jeremy, who texted in. <laughs> he said... <laughs> Rex's punctual punctuality is an asset, not a liability. And I would just agree with, yeah, wholeheartedly Jeremy, with Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, you don't have to live with that. I'm pretty sure I'm on your side, Ellie. <laughs> 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 it's great if you're a pastor waiting for a meeting to start. It's different when you're married to yeah. <laughs> Now, at Key Radio, we answer all the questions that you ever had. And if you were wondering what Green River that CCR was singing about, it, it's not the Green River in Utah oh. or Wyoming. Right. It's, it's one in... Near Winters, California. Oh, that doesn't even count. Honestly, Where John Forty would go as a kid. Oh, well, I guess that's okay then. All right. Oh, okay, we are. Oh, we are in the middle of a great conversation about marriage, and you guys, your story is so amazing, Ellie. You had said there's like a title for your this whole your whole marriage journey. What is that title? Mm. Yeah, we we just call it by God's grace alone, mm. because if it wasn't by His grace. And his mighty hand, there were days that we would not even be here. Mm. So it, in his mighty hand, is just mm, you know, yeah, and providential. You, yeah. got, you guys were not saved when you got married oh, no. and living an unsaved life. And, and mm. there's a lot of us that are, are listening that are, are familiar with there, that. Done it, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, God started working, but it took some time. Yes, it did. You had some people witnessing to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, actually it would just I had, and that that's a whole another story that we will I'll tell you off air sometime because it's so lengthy. But uh, yeah, anyway, when I I 
followed a uh, work-based religion and did that for about three or four years. And it's, it was not a local religion. And uh, that, I fell in love with it. I was willing to, to go f- to four years college to become a pastor in that particular religion. Thank God he was watching over me and kept me from doing that foolish move. But um, but what it did is it led me to to Christ, mm-hmm. which is great. You know, and again, sometime we'll tell you about it. But uh, yeah, so I didn't really have anybody that came out and and was witnessing to me mm-hmm. other than Jesus Himself. You know, through the way He was, you know, draw me to Him to Himself, and that. Um, I mean, the next thing we know, I'm I'm telling her, I says, guess what? <laughs> I'm going I'm going to church, and then just went on and tell her what I what I was going to do, and I was going to be going to Payson Bible Church, and where at the time, you know, Lee Whitworth was the was the pastor. So mm-hmm. then it was a discipleship thing between him and I for for a year, and and even part of the way through that, I told him, I says, Lee, I <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not convinced. I, if they built this church that I was affiliated with here in Utah, I'd leave and go to it. But God had those plans. Thank mm-hmm. you. For, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear about your sister, though, because you had mentioned that your sister was a part of your getting to know the Lord. <laughs> well, or at least that an effort was made. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the effort was made, yeah. And, and in fact, she'll eventually probably be hearing this. Uh, she tried. I had nothing to do with it. You know, I had just on straight armed her. I said, don't. I don't want to hear anything about it. So she was a believer, and she was telling you about Jesus. Yeah, not much about him. I mean, she would just just bring something up, you know, and and in different situations, and you know, especially by the time my mother was in the hospital, and was shortly after that died. But it was uh, her, her prayers undoubtedly is what was doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, in retrospect, I go, okay, I with God and His effectual calling, I see what was going on. But as far as somebody sitting down and, and talking to me about it. No, I got most of it from this false religion that I was following. And uh, so apparently the Lord was using that to to bring me along. Hmm. But it took it took several years and I was and that's the way I was going to go. So <laughs> let's talk about this. How long ago from when you were married to when you when you accepted the Lord Jesus as your savior? Um, how long of a span was that? For you guys well i became a christian in 2006 okay yeah, and that's and i was baptized then and everything else so from you know from 70 well 75 five. when we got married okay so, all right yeah, so, so it was some time oh mm-hmm. yeah okay we call it our 40 years in the desert because it was about <laughs> it just seemed like it was about that that long when we were. And, and if you don't know what that means, my friend, you have to go and look at the book of Exodus. And mm-hmm. that's the story of um, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And they were supposed to go to the promised land. Um, but mm-hmm. through their disobedience, they ended up uh, meandering through the desert for 40 years. That's, so that's, that's us. We were meandering through the deserts for, for probably not 40 years, but it, it seemed like 40 years, but a long time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's neat that... God can use anything mm-hmm. he can to, to bring himself bring you to himself mm-hmm. and, and it says timing the other part of it too yeah. I mean your sister probably would have loved to see you come to the Lord much sooner and and now Absolutely. you probably wish you would have came to the Lord much sooner but <laughs> yes yes but like you are. said it's, it's his perfect timing mm-hmm. he's already got it set I don't know why but he'll tell me later on but yeah it was it was that and she didn't I had been forced well for forces forces isn't a good word but I in my first marriage I had Tried to become a Christian one time before, but that was for my in-laws and family I was living with, not for me. And um, so when I uh, uh, this time, I, I knew in my heart always, you know, that I would, if I ever changed from my rotten self and and follow the Lord, it was either or. It wasn't gonna. It wasn't gonna be little of this and a little of that. I either I'm gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Or I'm not gonna do it, and up to that point, I was not gonna do it. <laughs> and then he's yeah, he changed things for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mm-hmm. now, now you're reading God's word mm-hmm. and living in that. Uh, how does that change marriage? I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's so much in there. Uh, mm-hmm. How how did how did that change how you relate with each other? And I think and, she and do marriage. Probably, 
probably answer a, a lot because I mean she's seen more of a change in me. I mean, obviously there's been some in her too, but the the change was in me. I mean, with the, with the patience and the cussing and everything else that I was just fond of, you know, uh, started to change. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he um, when he seriously dedicated his life to the Lord in 2006, uh, I saw a man that was quick tempered. Mm-hmm. I mean, launch things. You know, if it didn't work the first time, you know, um, to this man that I've known as a police officer was just stern and straight and um, rough to someone that had just softened. Hmm. A pussycat. The, huh? <laughs> 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 seriously softened in both attitude and demeanor and tone and voice and um it god just did an incredible work and so i saw a a rough man turn to not soft but still wise and um Mm tender-hearted that sounds like it would be easier to be married to that man it's been beautiful yeah god is beautiful and Mm -hmm. he's just incredibly changed our lives and so in Rex being the ho- the leader in the home, you know, he's always been the leader. Mm-hmm. And, um, but to see him lead with a heart through the Lord and his word, it's been just an incredible journey that I, you can't not help but, but want that gentleness, that tenderness, that truth, that leadership to be your leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I'm stubborn-hearted, thick in the head. (laughs) It took me two more years to figure this out. Mm -hmm. But God just, he just had a hold of my hand and his hand in my back, and he's just leading me to himself. And and then it's just... Well, you know, and and what I was trying to think of at that time is that uh, during those two years, the first time I had kind of been persuaded, you know, I mean, scared of the bat that, what's that? That's the Lord knocking on the door, scared me to death, you know, and I was baptized then at nine o'clock at night. Wow. Okay. They called the pastor and said he's ready. Um, and the thing is, I didn't want her to go through that same thing. So I told uh, people who I was going to church with at the time, you know, that asked about her. I said, she will come when she's led by the Lord to do so. And it took a couple of years, but, you know, because like she said, she figured just, I'll, I'll get over it. It's just one of those things, you know, like with a car type thing, you know, and, <laughs> you know, you got to drive that nice car. He's getting old and stuff, but no, he'll get over it. So she thought that's what I'd be too. I just didn't want her to feel like she had to be in church because I was. Sure. I just let my own, whatever I was doing, however I was changing to be just like the Lord says, it, it will be the determining factor. If, if there's one in the family in a marriage who is a believer, you know, the house is blessed in the sense that there's a good chance that person is going to, through his actions and demeanor and stuff, or hers, you know, help persuade the other. And then it kind of, kind of the way that went, huh? Mm-hmm. Took a couple of years, what, 2008? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to, yes. pa- I got to baptize mm-hmm. her. That was so cool. Yeah. Oh. I, I think the gospel would be a great place to go right now. I mm-hmm. think you're absolutely right. Uh, and I love what you're saying here too, because so many people get this wrong. It's like, okay, my spouse is a believer, so I have to be one too. Mm. And, you know, the Lord, he he died for us all. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He's calling us all individually. We have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It it comes there. And and you can't have a personal relationship through anybody else, Right. right? You can't give your kids a personal relationship with the Lord. The Lord and your child need to have that together, right? They always, you always hear the story, you know, there's no grandparents <laughs> or, or, or grandchildren in heaven or whatever it's called. It's, it's yeah. you're, we're all children of God, right? Yeah. So there's a difference there. Um, mm-hmm. So first we have to understand why we need the Lord Jesus. And I think your stories are so profound in this particular um, topic because you knew 
it was a difficult thing. You're, you know, you're not sharing everything, but your marriage was very difficult. There was a lot of things that had to happen. Um, there was a lot of difficult relationships with in-laws and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And that's those difficulties. They're not other people's problems. We have a responsibility to that relationship as well. And we don't always come off as being patient. We don't always come off as being kind or loving. In fact, we are all very selfish individuals. In fact, in marriage, most of the time, you get two selfish people getting together, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Both want their way. But the, what <clears throat> the Lord requires of us is that we love him. And that we love others. Amen. And we fall short on both of those things. And that's sin. That's sin. When we are disobedient to the Lord, that is sin. And there are some serious consequences to sin. Yeah. The wages of sin, the consequences, what we earn because of our sin isn't a pat on the back. And a, you could do better next time. Mm -mm. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. That's a serious issue, my friend. Mm -hmm. Are you finding yourself in a situation where you know you've sinned? And you know what? Once you sin, you've sinned. That there's there's no like, oh, I'll do better. And the no, your slate is not wiped clean. All of those sins are there. What do you what do you do with that? You can't do anything because you already earned it, and it, you earned death. Mm -hmm. And that's a scary, scary thing to be at the hands of an angry God because He is a good God, and sin has to be dealt with. He's righteous. He's righteous and just. Mm -hmm. But the good news, Mike. The good news is that Christ took that sin. And if you put your trust in what he's done, he, he lived a sinless life, died on a cross, rose again. Uh, but first he took on humanity. He was God from all eternity, took on flesh, and, and did those things. He lived that perfect life, died on a cross, rose again. And in that, he paid the price for our sins. So uh, in effect, what, what's going on is he's taking our sin and giving us this wonderful dose of righteousness. His. Uh, yeah. And we are righteous at that point. Oh, praise and God. What mm -hmm. a, uh, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're righteous. So God looks at us and sees Christ's righteousness. And, and so, but, but now we have this, we're not, we're, we're positionally perfect, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but we're still living in the flesh. Amen. We're still living in our bodies, but the process of that happens next is sanctification and we're mm -hmm. we're to be conformed into the image of christ day by day mm -hmm. and god working the old man out of us mm -hmm. and uh that the whole process is, is a beautiful thing too mm -hmm. and what what better place to display it but in marriage oh yeah yeah well you know with, with me it's it's you talk about the old man <clears throat> and i look in the mirror i I like to be able to shave without looking at myself, but I have to, <laughs> or I'll slip my own throat probably. But the, the nice thing about it is in Scripture where he, t he tells us that, you know, Paul was telling us that day by day, you know, we are, we are getting older, we're, we're getting more, more wrinkles and looking worse and everything else. But on the inside, as believers, we are daily becoming, through sanctification, becoming more like Christ daily so regardless how we look on the outside as we just rot away with age on the inside we're becoming new that we'll be glorified one day and uh, praise god that's what a, what a time will be because i i just keep thinking to myself too is that you know if you abide in christ and he abides in you when god looks at you he sees christ mm. you know and his righteousness instead of the terrible sinner that we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our, our responsibility here is just to put our trust in what Christ has done. Amen. So mm -hmm. we're, we're believing, we're trusting and putting our faith in something that's already been accomplished <laughs> and we can just rest mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. And yeah. the good works, the things that, you know, we think <laughs> we always get this backwards, like, oh, I'm going to do a really good job. I'm going to be a really good person. Then I will get approval. <laughs> no, you're rotten. <laughs> And in order to be approved by God, you have to just receive his free gift of salvation that comes only through his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, the good works come when you're like, wow, I am walking in faith. I am walking in faith. I, I believe in the Lord Jesus and my behavior is going to show it. Mm -hmm. And that behavior in marriage, 
<laughs> First Corinthians 13, perhaps you've heard of it. All of a sudden, love is patient. <laughs> love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. And then here it is. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now, this is a reflection when you're looking at this. This is talking, um, you know, this is this is a, a letter to a church, right. right? But I love how these letters apply to our lives personally as well. Well, we are a mini church. And, and we are the marriage. We are. And and we are called out. When when you are a believer in Christ, you are called out to live a life that glorifies him. And all of a sudden marriage is not some oh, I have to get married and then then you're miserable for the rest of your life like you see on sitcoms all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not where one spouse is a moron and the other one is a smart one and everybody picks on the, the moron, right? It's not like that at all. That is a that is a lie from Satan. We we laugh at those things, but there is some serious oh. undercurrent there. Mm -hmm. And that undercurrent is mm -mm, we are we are stripping down the beauty yeah. of marriage. Yeah. Now, in your situation, mm -hmm. How does that sancti how did that sanctification, how did that conforming to the image of Christ, how did that happen in your marriage? Were you very intentional at this point about how you were going to relate to one another? Because you can't, you, I'm sorry, but like Mike and I can attest to this, and maybe you're different, but you received the Lord. You're not all of a sudden nope. <laughs> super wife, super husband. I mean, no. there's, there's, there's a process, right? That's called sanctification. Okay, and how did that <laughs> process work for you? It it was just slowly, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I saw him change in the two years to, you know, to what God is conforming him to. This gentle, loving, patient, kind man. And so in me personally, I was just being transformed slowly. You know, just um, being changed I think a reflection of his love and his grace through the Lord um, changing him wanted me to change. And I loved that change. I loved the softer part of it. And, and it, you know, even in obedience to him, obedience to the Lord and obedience to my husband, I don't, I am not a doormat. And I am treated with tenderness and care and in reflection, I treat him the same way. Not all the time because I'm a sinner. I'm a stinking <laughs> sinner. <laughs> but through God's grace, mm -hmm. through his grace alone, he has guided me in that also. Mm -hmm. well, it's so. Just seeing her, her change over the years has been, has been wonderful too. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. um, and not from a bad person to a good person, but just the changing as she's grown in um, spiritually as far as, the, you know, the, the class he she told Lee one time he I think it was her or, or maybe it was Diana who was saying something about uh, her being able to someday lead a class or whatever and she said that will never happen. <laughs> That's so far behind now as far as <laughs> classes that she leads and the, the youth that she teaches and everything else. So seeing that is 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 really been been fantastic. But the sanctification that sanctification is it takes place and it's wonderful to see as we continue to grow. But I think more than anything else is. Right now, we're taking it in our uh, men's Bible uh, class that we have on, on Thursday mornings. There's probably five or six of us in there, along with the pastor. And uh, right now, we're going through the, uh, you know, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the, the, the um, uh, fruit of the Spirit. And as I was thinking about that today. You know, you list each one of those out. And if you are living those, or at least trying to live the fruit of the Spirit, you know, in your marriage, those things are gonna, you know, are gonna take place. Your, your, the, the love, the patience, the caring, the kindness, the self-control. Ooh, rough one for me. You know, it's just easier at one time just to throw it than have anything else to do with it or mm -hmm. punch it or something. And I say punch it. She's never been touched by me. That's it's not that. But my my mailbox still has a dent in it. You know, and that's probably like eighteen years old. But I leave it there so I can remember. 
That's what you were, uh, worm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of humility that I'm hearing in this conversation here, which now how does this, I mean, we always talk about there's a, there's like a triangle, if you can imagine a triangle, and mm-hmm. on the top is the Lord, and we're at the bottom, at the base. And then as we grow toward the Lord, we grow toward one another. Do mm-hmm. you find that that has been strengthening your marriage? Do you find that that is truth? And what along, I guess I want to ask a, a really tough question is, what has been the biggest uh, obstacle for you in growing together? After no, I mean, this is, what is the biggest obstacle? Growing together after we became yes. Christians? Mm-hmm. Because uh, you talk about sanctification and you're not all that. What was the biggest obstacle in order to get across? Like you were mentioning self-control was a difficult one for oh, you. Yeah, yeah, it was. Because I just, I had no problem flying off the handle. If something didn't go right, you know, mm-hmm. or, or if she didn't, you know, say something right or, or whatever happened to be the case, you know, and then fly off the handle. And then that just progressively mm-hmm went away and uh how did that go away you, though did you catch yourself in the act i mean what how do you how did oh, you deal absolutely. with that absolutely and the holy spirit with him convicting me you know that's what he was doing i could i could tell it you know uh, even a thought like that came you know the uh going off the handle or something it was it was through the holy spirit that convicted me and and caused me to back off and change or walk off or something mm-hmm. you know and and before becoming a christian it's just you never thought about that it would just pick up a wrench and throw it through the window or you know or something like that if it didn't go right you never thought twice about it mm-hmm. but uh once once the holy spirit is in your life and guiding you uh it's just it's the greatest thing in the world mm-hmm. Ellie, I know that you say that you are a rotten sinner. So what was the most <laughs> rotten sin that you had to overcome? <laughs> um, I think learning how to communicate to him. Oh. Really, because um, if he hurt my feelings or he was in a stinky mood or whatever, I would just avoid him. I wouldn't talk to him. I wouldn't, um, I know I'd fix dinner, set it on the table. I'm not hungry. I would walk away. You know, and so I think to overcome honest, um, gentle, sincere communication was the hardest thing for me. Um, but through, you know, through um, gentle, loving Christian women that God has put into my life, He um, has guided me to to learn how to speak. You know. Don't just shut down. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. How are they going to know other than, well, she's in a mood, <laughs> you know, kind Mike of thing. Mike said it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think communication is, is the biggest hurdle I've had. Mm-hmm. And it's, if he hurts my feelings, I tell him immediately, well, yeah. that's kind of, kind of hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. And then we can, we can talk it out. What did I say? What did I do that hurt your feelings? And so, yeah, it's really opened the door mm-hmm. more. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's made things a lot better. And and and, and mm-hmm. one main thing too, is, and we have done this, I think, even clear back before we become Christians, and that is the fact that we would not not let the sun go down on an on an argument. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine people who would be have an argument, a serious one, and even climb in the same bed together, mm-hmm. turn your backs to each other, and then wake up in the morning and pick up where you left off that mm-hmm. never and i don't think we ever did that did we i can't you know, think of it but always make sure it was that was settled that evening mm-hmm. you know before we ever went to sleep and so before we become christians after and, and just run on out huh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's interesting you say that you were using that standard before you were christians but that is biblical Mm. So didn't that, know it though. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that interesting? I, I just I love that. I love that. Mm. Okay, I've got a few more questions. This time it's going to be about what advice that you would give all of us married people who are not exactly at the forty-five year mark. But first, let's just go to one song. One song. Do we have time? You know what? I'm not going to ask that. No, let's not go to a song. I've changed my mind. Let's just go right on. What is? She can change her mind. I can change my mind. See, Mike can do it. Women do that. <laughs> Grant's like, I'm single. I don't know any of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> women. <laughs> okay, the question is this. What is the best advice that you could give for somebody who is married after all of these years 
what is something that you've always gone back to that you think is probably the best advice that you've ever received in your life? Yeah. Ellie, did you want to start? Um, yeah, I would just say it's truly the communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't have the groundwork of communication, you can't build a marriage on silence. You don't understand. You don't, you know, what did you do when you first met each other? You'd talk each other's ear off. Oh, I like this. I do this. You know, I'm from this culture or whatever. Um, But yeah, you build the relationship on communication. Mm -hmm. You want to be with that person. You want to hear what they're all about. You want to hear their, I love to hear life stories. Mm -hmm. You know, your family, you know, everybody's got a goofy, goofy family. Mm -hmm. And so I love to hear about families, sisters, brothers, how they grew up, where they're at in the family, single child, middle child, you know, 20 children, whatever. And so I think communication is the foundation that you build the relationship on, and then you continue that relate that communication. But it has to be honest and biblical, because if you're just nagging at each other later on, that's not communication. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. Exactly, because you, mm. you, you grow in that with, the, with communication. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. And uh, as you... Uh, the the longer you're married, and especially if there's communication, if people shut down and don't talk to each other for years, but you get to where you then you kind of know what she's thinking. If something goes off, you go, uh oh, I yeah, I did something <laughs> wrong, <laughs> you know, and you just go, you go after, it. and you talk about those kind of things, and um, and then you you rectify the situation, whatever. But, but I mean, we get to now, it, we almost have to quit talking because we don't have to. We I'll say something. She's just thinking about that. Where did you get that at? You know? You know well, that's actually kind of creepy. It, it is. I'm telling you. It is. I took a look at it. Man, that's that's weird. How'd you know I was thinking about that? And I'm telling you, it was just that. I was thinking about something, and within a few minutes, you know, mm-hmm. she comes and said something or vice versa, and I go, whoa, we keep it up. We want to be talking to each other. We just be thinking. You know? so, <laughs> Stare deep into my eyes. That's it. I think number one, though, is that you've, you've got to, how can anybody live without following the Lord? I, I don't know. I look mm-hmm. in the past, I could understand, you know, because of the way things were. But to have a marriage based on, on religion, not religion, a marriage based on Christ and everything that he's done for us and the here again, I, I keep going back to the the fruit of the spirit. I mean, they're there. It's it's laid out for us. Mm-hmm. He's given to us. Just do those. Keep those things in your mind. And as a Christian, mm-hmm. you probably will. But just dwell on those so that you you know is my actions does am I doing this particular thing? You know, peace or patience, love or joy, what mm-hmm. kindness and and such, self control, big one. Mm. But yeah. And it's nice, too, because we don't have that in us, and but Christ we gives it to us. Christ and so, it, you know, when you're like, how you can overcome the problem, like in your situation with self-control, well, that's the Lord working in you. Oh, and we need to understand that those aren't things that you just, you know, you want those and you and they're gifts and you need to open those gifts right from the Lord. But you got to continually ask him, Lord, you got to work on this part in my life. I, I want my heart to be more like yours, mm-hmm. which is which is so very very important. I'm also hearing from both of you, like in the beginning, things weren't so peaceful. <laughs> but it sounds like then once the Lord grabbed a hold of both of you, there's even when you come in, you're just you're full of life. But there's a peace about you mm-hmm. that I've noticed. Like your hearts just seem so sat, all satisfied. Mm-hmm. So, did you did you notice that in your home after you accepted uh, the Lord that there was a peace that wasn't there before? Well, absolutely. I, I think one of the things we talk about all the time is friends that we had before. We could we can see the effect of the calling of Christ when He is doing. Sorry, I wander away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Look around, pastor, so I can see the other mic. Anyway, uh, and that is that He took our our friends away, and. They end up getting those we used to party with and stuff like that. They they end up divorced, all mm. kinds of problems, stuff like that. I got tired of living in Salt Lake, moved down here so it would be closer to either Moab, where she's from, or down towards Richfield, where, where I was, where my parents were at. And um, it would just, I don't know, it just, uh, just 
Well, just a neat thing. It was. Uh, mm-hmm. But he gave you new, new yeah. friends, new, new friends, more precious friends, probably. He did. He gave us the body of Christ, mm-hmm. and uh, but even up till then, we uh, we had some some rough times. But once we started in on the same page with Christ, then you, you try harder. Mm-hmm. You're you know you're more not only trying to pl- trying to please the spouse, but you're you're wanting to please God. Mm-hmm. And so you, you, you just try harder, mm-hmm. you know, right now I'm taking a biblical counseling online course and I'm hoping what that will do is so that I can help others, you know, to be able to talk with them about, you know, marriage. I, I don't know why God waited so long before, you know, I mean, I'm 71, you know, I got our twins or they'll be 50 in May. You know, probably older than you are, I'm guessing, (laughs) or or close, you know. We have one living here locally. Our our son is our our baby, so to speak, and he's, what, 42? 41, sorry, Marty, 41, (laughs) and his brother living down in Texas, you know, and he's 42. It's like a quiz show right now. 43. (laughs) Ellie's just like 43. (laughs) Yeah, so it's, it's been a wild ride, but it's sure been a beautiful one, actually, since it's about 2006. Wow. But you know, that's what I really want to celebrate here too, is that the Lord has done an amazing work in your lives and we being a part of your lives and watching you, Mm. we are blessed by you because now we can look and say, this is, this is a relationship. That's what I want. Mm. And, and I love that it came through the Lord Jesus Christ and you guys wear him well mm, and you, you love yeah. people well and the lord continues to work in your lives and we are just a real we're privileged to be a part of seeing that so thank, thank you. you very much thank you guys oh this has been so good and it went so fast i'm glad that we didn't go to music <laughs> 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 my friend thank you so much we hope that this has been a real encouragement to you thank you for letting us be a part of your day this has been mike and heather in the morning a production of key radio located in beautiful provo utah For more information about the program and the ministries of Key Radio, check out our website, keyradio.org. On behalf of Mike, Heather, and the entire Key Radio staff, have a blessed and glorious day.